Hey everyone, today we are going to see how to add Google Map View to a clean React Native project and how to optimize the map view with hundreds of stateful markers without downgrading its performance. For this, we will first need to create a React Native app using the boilerplate. I will quickly run through these steps and if you need more info, links are in the description below. After creating the app, we will need to clean the default content and install React Native Maps to use in our example use case. You can go to React Native Maps GitHub page and click on installation to find out more on installing the library. After installing the library with npm, you can use Swat install to install auto link for libraries. Also to enable Google Maps, you will have to add code displayed here to your app delegate m file from the xcode after running the application clean your code and components to show the map in the main view Here we will render the map with newly created location view component. To show the map full screen, we will have to specifically handle these styles. Keep this part in mind. If your map is not showing in the application, this could be the issue. Here I am going to add window height to the map view component to cover the full screen of the app. For this example, we will need a set of random locations to display in the app. To achieve that, we are going to use random location library. We will create an array of 200 elements of geo points to generate markers in the map view. We can add this in use effect hook to generate the markers when the map view is mounted. Check. After that we can map these geo points with markers and show them in the map view. Also we can increase the radius to show them dispersed throughout the map.
You can see now that the web view is performing quite well with the native iOS map. And the markers are appearing seamlessly throughout the map view. Now we are going to add the stateful map marker component to our example. Also, to demonstrate the network request, we will use a placeholder image and load it as the marker. You can see that the markers were turned to blue as soon as we add the image URL. To simulate a network request, we will display the blue image and then we will show the grey image after a timeout. You can see that the iOS native map is performing very well even if we have many markers. Now we have to detect the region change when the map view is dragged. For that we are going to use on region change prop. Also, I am going to change the markers so that whenever the region is changed, the marker will render again with the updated props. You can see now, when we change the region, the marker will change the color from blue to grey. Next, we will switch to Google Maps to show how the markers will be affected by it. Note that you have to update the code in App Delegate M file before adding Google Provider prop to the map view. You can see already that the map view is far more lagging when we use Google Map rather than the native iOS map. To minimize that lagging, we are going to dynamically change the tracks view changes prop according to the state. When the content is loaded, we are going to set it as true and once the state change is over, we are going to make it as false. To show you the performance lag, I have now decreased the number of markers to 100 and update the tracks view changes props by steps. Initially when we make it to false, it has a good performance gain. 
and if we make it true you can see that the map is lagging when dragging in between the places Next, if we pass shoot track variable, it won't affect the rendering, but you can see that the map view is performing well in between the dragging. We can further increase the performance by introducing load HD bounce to the region change function. We don't need to render the location markers as soon as the region changes. Rather than that, we will wait for one second time to render the final markers list in the map view. Note that we have to wrap function in use callback in order to initialize the debounce function once only after rendered. Let's print some logs to see how it's performing. You can see region change function is called more than once and debounce function called after all updates are done. So finally you can see that we did two performance improvements by changing tracks view prop dynamically and adding debounce callback function to avoid region updates too frequently. Also don't forget to add key prop to map functions when rendering markers as well. With that I will conclude the tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more tutorials.